How's it going guys? This is my John Deere D170 and I'm experiencing an issue with my rear end not wanting to lock up at the right time. Meaning that I can't drive at a very fast speed whenever I'm cutting grass. So in today's video, I'm gonna go diagnose it and fix it in today's video. I've recently replaced this belt with a Chinesium belt and that's my main reason what I'm thinking. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna quickly jack up this mower and bring it up so I can even get under. Before we do that, I'm gonna remove the deck. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna locate this bolt right here that's underneath the muffler. It's a 17 millimeter and it comes out with an extension on an impact. Don't forget the washer and it comes out like that. You're gonna to wanna to go to your deck lever, move it all the way to the right, bring it all the way down past the one, like that. Now that this is all the way down, we've relieved a lot of stress on our deck leveling. So we can get this R pin, pull it out, pull out the washer, and we can just do that and get the deck leveling out of the way. We gotta do this to the other side now. We're gonna get this R pin, lift it up, and pull it out just like that. Can't forget about the washer. And we can lift on the deck and pull on this slowly and it'll come off. Now we can pop the belt off the pulley by pulling down and cycling it off the pulley like that. Now we have our trailing arms. We're gonna get our R pin once again and pull it out. We can pull the trailing arm to release it. Same deal with the other side. We're gonna pull out the R pin and pull down the trailing arm. And turn our wheel all the way to the right. Push the deck towards the rear wheels, push it forward, and pull out the deck. When pulling the deck, please make sure not to hit the wheels and make sure to lift up the guide rod in front to make sure you don't damage any of the tie rods. Now that we've got the deck out, we can worry about lifting this mower now. So let's get to that. To lift up the mower, I'm using a mix of a jack and plastic ramps to make sure I'm safe underneath. Now the lawnmower is in the air, we can get under it and undo the PTO pulley and inspect the belt. Alrighty, this belt's very stretched. Okay, the tensioner is active and the belt, we hold this, not a lot of play, but enough where the actual arm moves. Meaning, this is our root cause. Take this out, we need to take off this pulley right here to get it away from these keepers. This bolt is a 15 millimeter. I recommend using a good impact or you use hand tools to take this out as mine was very stuck in there and my impact would not budge. Excuse the poor cinematography, the pulleys slide off of the shaft. When the pulleys come off, the belt will become a lot more loose and a lot more easier to work with when we take off the rear and front pulleys. This pulley highlighted is the pulley directed inside the V and this one is for the flat side of the belt. This is incredibly important to remember as if this is not done correctly, your belt would not work and will possibly shred it. The next step is to remove the bolt holding in the steering gear that goes to the pinion. This is a 19 millimeter nut and I recommend taking it off with an impact. It's on a spline drive so it's really difficult to really pick that up. So. You shouldn't really mess that up. Now the next step is to physically lift the steering wheel up and get the shaft out of the way so the belt can come out. Now we can actually get the belt semi out. Next thing is the PTO clutch. This is a 13 millimeter and I recommend using an impact. To undo the PTO engage connector, lift up on the locking tab and pull it out. Do not let the PTO hang on this harness as it will get damaged. Now that out of the way, the belt just comes out. We're gonna have to take it off the transaxle now, which is a little bit more difficult, but we'll get to it, don't worry. Now, we gotta loosen that right there. We gotta loosen that. I recommend one tool for this job, a stubby 15 millimeter. If you do not have this, your life will be a living nightmare trying to get a full size 15 in there. Let's take this thing out now. Taking this thing out was a pain in the ass. It took about 15 minutes, but after that, it came out smooth sailing. So just remember, this does take a while and make sure just to have patience. Now you got that keeper out, we can wrap it around the fan and just fucking pull it out. Like that. So, as you can tell, this belt is a lot bigger than the new belt. The new belt is in the description. It's a Kevlar reinforced belt and uh, it will stop this stretchiness from happening. Cause whenever you have these normal belts over time, they'll stretch and actually start to tear. 
like that. So this is garbage. So we just, and we're gonna go put this one on now and just follow the exact same steps. Okay, now we're gonna, oh, look at that. I'm missing all these fins. All right, I'm gonna go uh, order a fan. We're missing a lot of teeth. Look at all that. Look at all that. So we're gonna remove this fan and get a replacement. These bolts hold in the frame and they're 10 millimeters and I recommend using an impact with an extension. These bolts are 13 millimeters and I recommend a very long extension to take them out. And then these are T25 Torx. I recommend something like an impact or even a ratchet to take these out, it's not that serious. These bolts are 13 millimeter and the steering wheel bolt is a 19 millimeter. With the steering wheel bolt disconnected, we can pull out the shaft. The battery bolts on my D170 are mismatched, but they're usually 10 millimeters. The bolt holding in the solenoid is a 10 millimeter. To disconnect the cruise control and parking brake levers, just pull firmly and they'll come out of their socket. When all is disconnected, the cluster detaches. This spring is meant to hold down the tension on the brake pedal, and I recommend keeping it inside of a safe spot. To remove the deck lowering grip on the handle, twist it clockwise to reduce the grip strength, and it'll eventually come off. Disconnect the parking brake harness. The gas pedal. Before lifting this up, in this video I do not show me taking off the spring for the cruise control. Make sure to disconnect that safely and reapply that spring whenever we put it back on. Now we have to detach the springs for the gas tank, and once that's completed, it comes out as one. Unfortunately, in this video, I do not show the install of the fan, but this video by Hank's Garage really shows how to do it. His video link is in the description. And here's a clip of that video that shows the removal of a similar fan. Get yourself a pair of uh, snap ring pliers. You have a small snap ring that's on the top of the shaft right there. You're just going to want to remove that so it'll allow you to remove the pulley and then get to the fan. And so with the snap ring removed, I'm just going to reach down there, kind of coax the pulley and belt off. I'm just letting it sit forward. And now we have access to the fan. So. So I knock things around. The fan literally just comes right off. Now with that part of the video out of the way, let's move towards installing everything back on, including the drive belt. To start the routing of the belt, what I recommend doing is shoving it near where the steering column goes to the front PTO. After that's completed, we can kind of ignore the tensioner for now and we can attach it to the transaxle first. And put it in the V, just like that. Align it like so. And we're gonna go get that hold down that we got. On the very top of the guide, there is a five millimeter Allen and we can just put that on with the socket and an extension instead of having to do the whole wrench business again. Now we can install the fuel tank springs. To route the belt, put the inside of the belt on the V pulley and put the flat side on the flat pulley. Also make sure that the belt is towards the PTO. With the belt in the correct orientation, we can tighten down the idler pulleys. Now get the driving pulley, put the belt on the V side, and put it on to the crankshaft. Ensure that it fully clicks in just like this. When installing the PTO, there is an ear right here that has to go in a slot on the PTO. After my hands look like this, the PTO is finally on. Plug is in. When putting on the body, I recommend putting the parking brake lever through the little holes. This also goes for the cruise control lever. Remember to reattach the parking brake sensor. Now we can attach all four of the 13 millimeter bolts that holds on the bottom of the cluster to the frame. Align both the parking brake lever and the cruise control lever once that's completed, we can attach the parking brake grab lever to engage the parking brake. After that, we can line up the starting solenoid and tighten down the 10 millimeter bolt. Furthermore, we can line up the cluster to the bottom side of the cluster. Before tightening down these T25s, I recommend putting in the steering shaft. If you do not, you'll not be able to get it in. You'll have to take this all apart again. To normally attach the pedals, there is normally an E-clip here. Mine broke and I drilled a hole and now I have an R pin here. Slide the pinion gear on the rack and tighten down the 19 millimeter nut. Put the battery in the battery tray and tighten down both the positive and the negative terminals. After that is completed, we're gonna do a test start and see if this thing moves.
now that we know that it can move, we're going to move the deck and put it onto the D-170 again. Slide the deck under with the wheels turned. Push the rod in the hole. Put the washer on. And then the nut. Now we attach the deck ears to the deck leveling arm assembly. The arm. Line it up with the hole. Push it in. Get the cotter pin. And put it this way. Now with all that out of the way is the identical for the other side. And now let's cut some grass. Again, the same patch of lawn that I used to do the sharpening video. And as you can tell, the blades are great and they're sharpening very cleanly and I have no other issues. But this is not a flat area. As you guys can tell, everything is working fine. We're having great momentum. We're not getting stuck anywhere and everything is just fine. But now let's see it more on an incline. And as you guys can tell, this is a lot more aggressive terrain. There's a lot more bumps, a lot more grass to cut, and it's a lot more steeper than the flat area. It does seem to be doing a good job, but we do encounter some issues like right here. I end up getting stuck for a little bit, but I do make my way and I continue cutting the grass like nothing else happened. This example is with that Kevlar reinforced belt. And as you guys can tell, it is a bit slower now. So now I am a little suspicious about that belt. Other than that, it's working great. But now, here's future me with a message. Here's future Nick here. Here's the belt I just installed in the video. And as you can tell, it's completely demolished. It was slipping and it was just not acting right. So, in the description, there's this new belt. I'm not going to show you that I'm installing it. In this video, I'm installing this belt. But this is the belt you want to get. Here's the part number. It's a Stenz belt, it's thicker, it's made in India, it's not garbage, it's very good quality belt, and uh, this is the belt you want to do. Could also get a Napa belt, which will do a little bit better than this. Anyways, back to the video. But yeah guys, that is how you guys change your belt and fan on your John Deere D170. I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and take it easy.